huge. Everyone in the mainstream media is in panic mode after the release of the film Sound of Freedom, a movie that exposes one of the darkest evils in our society today. And none of Hollywood's elites are happy about Mel Gibson's explosive revelations in a movie. Not only is Mel Gibson exposing Hollywood, but he also exposing Oprah? For what? First time I really came over here. You know, I had a whole bunch of weird paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand. You're seven years old and someone is stroking you. It feels good. Our future is our children. Now, the first step in eradicating this crime is awareness. And the goal of the movie Sound of Freedom is to do just that, to bring awareness to an issue that most people in our society would be aligned on. However, the woke and evil news media suffered a major meltdown and started to attack a movie that is about protecting children from predators. The Rolling Stone talking about Sound of Freedom is a superhero movie for dads with brain worms. What are they talking about, man? It, it's just evil. And then the Washington Post, Sound of Freedom is a box office hit whose star embraces QAnon, doing anything they can to discredit this movie and the message that it's trying to spread. We're uh, being shafted by mainstream media. We're not getting any coverage. We were talking about on the podcast the 39 or 35 kids that were rescued in Georgia. Yeah. And it was a blip in the news. Like how, and but meanwhile, I saw a thousand articles on how mean Ellen is. Yes. That story right there should be leading on everything. So it's really up to the American people to sustain the pressure. Because yes. the media, for some reason, is saying we're irrelevant. We are the irrelevance. We're not going to uh, um, uh, put any of our time into this film. But no, the American people are the ones that are going to dictate to the politicians and to the media exactly where we're going to go. What we're facing today is fierce. I will confess. And of course, one of the most reliable news media in the world, CNN, had to share their thoughts on the movie. CNN uh, is asking a question, so what do you think about this uh, movie? You know, there's a lot of people that are saying that there's some right-wing QAnon, you know. W what do you think about this? And this guest, you should see, yeah, yeah, watch okay. this. And you seem pretty familiar with him because he doesn't really hide his association with this real wild plot uh, that that involves, you know, drinking the blood of children and things like that. No, he doesn't hide it at all. And you have a lot of people who are in this world of QAnon who say, oh, they don't know what that is. They've never heard of it. They're just asking questions. With somebody like Jim Caviezel, he is openly embracing it. He's openly using its catchphrases and its concepts. He's speaking at QAnon conventions. And this film is being marketed to either specific QAnon believers or to people who believe all of the same tenets as QAnon, but claim they don't know what it is. And The Sound of Freedom does focus on a real issue of trafficking, uh, but that theme, it, it's sort of like that kernel of truth that feeds the QAnon conspiracy theory. Uh, tell us how those two things work together. Sure, and the most durable and the most believable conspiracy theories are not entirely false. There's something in them that is true and the rest of it is false, but the believers point to the one true thing and they say, oh, you don't believe that this particular thing is true. In terms of trafficking, we know trafficking is real. We know it has real victims. No one is denying that. But these films are created out of moral panics. They're created out of bogus statistics. They're created out of fear. And with something like Sound of Freedom, it specifically is looking at QAnon concepts of these child trafficking rings that are run by the high level elites and only people like Tim Ballard and only people like Jim Caviezel. And by extension, only people like the ticket buyer can help bring these trafficking rings down. So there's a very participatory element. You're not just going to see a movie. You're just killing two hours on a hot day. You are helping bring down these these rings and save children. Now, it's not true, but it's a very comforting and it's a very warm feeling to have. So according to CNN, this movie is nothing but a conspiracy theory, something that has some truth to it, but mostly lies. Question, what has Hollywood and the media become when they attack a movie about saving children, yet defend exposing kindergartners to sex? Answer, evil. The things that are happening with children, that yeah. is the one thing that, you know, Christ wasn't really a fire and brimstone kind of guy, but it went, when he came to <laughs> harming his little ones. Better to have a millstone, millstone tied around your neck and be thrown into the deepest part of the sea. Right. <laughs> For them to say that it's QAnon and it's fake, it's like 
they're almost they don't want people messing with their influx of children it's a huge problem and yes they made money off this movie but now look how many people are talking about these kids and at least somebody now is opening their mouth and by the way this movie was made five years ago i don't know if you guys yeah. this movie's old that is indeed true the movie sound of freedom is five years old but why is it now coming out in theaters it was made by fox before the disney acquisition so then disney they, they essentially didn't release it they didn't want to release it they they sold it to this other studio and the studio actually had to crowdfund to get a theatrical release so that's kind of what's ironic about the fact that it did beat indiana jones at least for one weekend is that this could have been money going to disney but it's also kind of suspicious why didn't disney want to release this movie was it not in line with their their yeah. branding and by the way isn't disney a kids channel isn't it like yeah. about kids and protecting kids so why wouldn't you want to protect kids worldwide it's yeah, not kind of weird perhaps they don't really want yeah. to and if you ask me i can tell you why this movie was put on the back burner it's because disney and those other studios are not about protecting kids and we must also note that the movie's motto is antithetical to disney and hollywood's agenda god's children are not for sale and for a long time in this movement people have been trying to get rid of age of consent laws we get rid of age of consent laws we get rid of the numerosity requirement and all of a sudden the foundation of civilization, right, um, is <laughs> gone. Yeah. The Sound of Freedom is a blockbuster movie with a battle cry. God's children are not for sale. Yet some studios like Disney are outraged over the sleepers hit success and they've sent their meat puppets in the mainstream media into 4K fits. You have the Rolling Stone and Washington Post who once celebrated Netflix cutie series are now simping for human trafficking. I'm a kidnap survivor. The line is drawn here. On one side are children, on the other is evil choose of all the things that disturb me in this culture of all the horrific sinful wretched wicked corrupt influences that go on in this culture i think the thing that distresses me most is the war on children and believe it or not some of the most powerful people are behind this war and the movie sound of freedom gives us a tiny but important glimpse into this whole operation in the glitzy world of hollywood where controversies and scandals are the talk of the town it's surprising how one particular movie has managed to fly under the radar sound of freedom directed by alejandro gomez monteverde delves deep into the dark underbelly of illegal human trade revealing the shocking methods employed by the elite to lure innocent victims into their sinister rings. But what's even more intriguing is the lack of buzz, press coverage, and endorsements surrounding this important film. Why is a film starring a big actor, an established director, and being promoted by Mel Gibson is not being shown in cinemas? It seems the message of the movie has ruffled some powerful feathers. I think there's a small number of people who know they're doing the bidding of evil. I, I don't even know who they are, don't, I, you know. But I think there are those who know exactly what they're doing. There has always been, on the part of Satan and the kingdom of darkness, an effort to destroy children, to bring them so close to the darkness that they could never see the light. They are the most defenseless of all humans, and the enemy of our souls is against them. They already have sin built in and are more easily attracted to Him than they are to their Creator, more easily deceived. The film sheds light on the horrors of this abhorrent industry, aiming to raise awareness and mobilize action against it. However, despite the urgency of the topic, major streaming platforms like Amazon, Netflix, and Hulu shockingly rejected the movie, refusing to give it a platform for worldwide exposure. It's a puzzling move, considering these platforms are often at the forefront of promoting socially conscious content. Could it be that the film's explosive revelations hit a little too close to home for some? Adding fuel to the fire, celebrity voices that are typically quick to endorse woke causes have remained eerily silent about Sound of Freedom. It's as if the Hollywood elite have collectively turned a blind eye to a film that exposes their own industry's dirty secrets. The lack of support from these influential figures raises questions about their true commitment to social justice and human rights. But the intrigue 
doesn't end there. This culture is weaponized to destroy children. It's systematically designed to do that. 62.5 million of them have been slaughtered in the womb since Roe versus Wade in the 70s. We all understand the breakdown of the family. If a child can escape abortion and be born, that child has about a 50-50 chance of being born to a married couple. It is likely that that married couple will get a divorce. It is likely that they will be unfaithful to their marital vow. It is likely that the child will be sent to a public school and come under the influence of those whose agenda is anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-Scripture. And as you know, our country, the politicians who lead it, are making laws that are devastating to children under the pressure of sexual freedom, homosexuality, transgenderism. The desire is to make that normal and to punish people who speak against it with laws in the category of hate speech. And that is one of the reasons why this video might be demonetized, blocked, and censored. Because it addresses something that the kingdom of darkness does not want light to be shed on. And that is the same reason why the movie Sound of Freedom could not find a streaming platform, a network, or a studio for it to be published. Whispers in the industry suggest a more sinister motive behind the rejection and lack of promotion for Sound of Freedom. Accusations circulate that the likes of Disney, Netflix, and Amazon Prime deliberately avoided obtaining the rights to the film to allegedly prevent the truth about child AB and the illegal trade from reaching global viewers. Because Hollywood elites do not want the truth to come out about this dark and ugly industry. One such group of elites is the Good Club. This is the creme de la creme of global elites. According to The Guardian, this exclusive group of billionaire philanthropists holds top secret meetings right in the heart of New York City. Names like Bill Gates, George Soros, Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey, David Rockefeller, and Ted Turner often grace the guest list. But also, lesser known but equally wealthy figures like Eli and Edith Broad also make appearances, making us wonder what really goes on behind closed doors. Now, one name that sticks out is Oprah Winfrey. We all know her as the billionaire show host and philanthropist with a name larger than life, right? Wrong. Buckle up because there's a side of Oprah that she'd rather keep hidden, and it's far from admirable. Is it possible that the Queen of Talk has a darker side that she doesn't want us to see? Well, the highly anticipated film, Sound of Freedom, is set to expose the shocking methods used by the Hollywood elites to trap innocent victims. While the movie doesn't explicitly name Oprah, her alleged connections to notorious figures like Harvey Weinstein cannot be ignored. You see, despite Weinstein's long-standing reputation as a predator, Oprah maintained a close relationship with him. Speculation arose that she may have even encouraged actresses to work with him, leading to accusations of her complicity in the alleged misconduct. These allegations conflicted with Oprah's public persona as a champion of women's empowerment and a supporter of the hashtag MeToo movement. Some argued that her association with Weinstein demonstrated a double standard in her treatment of accused individuals. And this is not the worst of it all. Imagine that stuff. That couldn't be the reason for why so-and-so was acting like, could it? Mm -hmm. And then you find out later on the track that you are exactly on track. Ladies and gentlemen, these are shocking revelations. And you wonder why the media and the Hollywood elites would not allow this movie to air anywhere. Sound of Freedom was initially in the hands of Disney, which acquired the rights after its merger with 21st Century Fox in 2019. However, the House of Mouse mysteriously shelved the project, leaving many to wonder why. Could it be an attempt to cover a specific group of industry elites? You see these so-called industry big shots who wield immense power behind the scenes of Hollywood have always presented themselves as philanthropists with hearts of gold. But what if their true intentions were far more sinister than we could have ever imagined? And it's actually very telling when the same people who are on the one hand blocking the sound of freedom, on the other hand praising movies such as cuties. And that's what's frustrating about that CNN guy. He's acting like moral outrage over this is bad or unwarranted. <laughs> He's right. asking as oh, it's to spread fear. Yeah, you should be afraid for your children. You should be actively trying to prevent this. Why is moral Bingo. outrage bad when this is something that's objectively evil? This is an area to be intolerant in. Like zero tolerance for this. By the way, watch yes. this. The Guardian. Cuties review. Netflix's controversial child exploitation film is bold, flawed, and misunderstood. <laughs> 
misunderstood. Okay, so here's the next one. Cuties review. A coming of age movie caught in the culture wars. Thanks to a major marketing mistake, this award-winning French movie has been accused of sexualizing girls. It's actually a sensitive portrait of growing pains that deserve to be seen. Are you, Are kidding, you me? kidding me? Go to the next one. Okay, the, the human traffic film Sound of Freedom trashed by liberal outlets as QAnon uh, adjacent. This is how the Prave Down Society has become and it makes perfect sense for a godless culture to praise something that is completely immoral and block a movie that is trying to raise awareness and shed light on one of the darkest evils in our world today. Is Satan real? Yes. <laughs> so describe what the is prince it? of the power of the air yeah, who is what now is at work he? in the sons of disobedience. Yeah, there, there is a, there is a real devil. There is real evil. But you know, in in Ephesians chapter two, those first you know three verses, we, we see this triad. Right? We do see Satan. We do see the devil. I um, mean, he is real. Um, he is a fallen angel. He is the prince of the power of the air. He is at work in the sons of disobedience. Uh, uh, and so. Father of all lies, father, father of all absolutely, chaos. Absolutely, we do see that. But we also see the world, right? This this world, this world system that we live in, okay? That teaches us what to think, why to think, when to think, okay? Mm -hmm. How to think. Um, it teaches us, you know, wh wh what to desire, when to desire. So we see the world. And they also see the flesh. We are fallen in Adam. And we inherit um, a sin nature, from Adam because of our fallen Adam. Now you put these together, it's the world, the flesh and the devil. And that's what gets you this chaos that we find ourselves in. And again, when we're encouraging that and when we're calling good evil and evil good, um, we're just, we're pouring, we're pouring gasoline on that fire. And it's so disconcerting and so sad that children aren't protected anywhere in our society. They're not protected in the womb, they're not protected out of the womb, they're not protected in the schools. So it is up to you parents, it is up to you ladies and gentlemen, it is up to you brothers and sisters to protect your children at all costs. Recently we all realized that aborted babies were being dismembered and baby body parts were being sold by Planned Parenthood when it was discovered and chronicled in video. Instead of indicting Planned Parenthood for selling aborted baby parts, the man who took the video was indicted on nine counts. This is a very dangerous place for children. You have about a 50-50 chance to survive the womb. No way to escape judgment. Satan's war starts in the womb and never lets up. It's carried through every medium possible to destroy children. Broken homes, sinful parents, in every electronic form of media, educational system, it's everywhere. Satan's war on children, by the way, is a war on God because the children belong to him. That's right. All the children in the world belong to God. So the war on children is a war on God. So all those people who are persecuting children, trading children, and killing children in the womb will answer to God. This then raises to massive proportions the responsibility that the people of God have with regard to children. We are to protect them at all cost, as we see illustrated in the movie Son of Freedom. Even at the cost of our life, that is our precious children are. The war on children is massive and it's orchestrated by some of the most powerful people in the world. Our only hope in the war is God himself and the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ because the gospel of Christ can change any heart, even the heart of those who are raging war on those precious children. This is it for this video and let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Please visit our website, thegospelofchrist.info, where you'll find over our merch and information about our ministry. Subscribe to our Patreon, follow us on Rumble and Instagram. And as always, with love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.